In this video, I just wanted to take a quick look at two important oxygen-containing classes of organic compounds, the alcohols and the ethers. And these are both characterized by the replacement of, you can think of it as a CH2 group, by an oxygen. For example, the alcohols are derivatives of hydrocarbons in which we replace an H with an OH, or what we'll call a hydroxyl group. These are alcohols. And we can represent them in general, for instance, as ROH, where the R is some hydrocarbon fragment. This is a shorthand you'll see used a lot in your organic courses, some carbon-containing fragment. And the OH group is the important functional group or structural unit here that characterizes the alcohol. A classic and important and very famous example of an alcohol is ethanol. And ethanol is a byproduct of fermentation, but can also be synthesized via the addition of water to ethylene, C2H4, typically in the presence of an acid, like sulfuric acid or some other acid catalyst. Notice that the elements of water, H and OH, have added to the two carbons of the alkene. Now, an important point about the alcohols is that they are not ionic compounds. There's a very big difference between, for instance, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, which we really know to be Na plus and OH minus, particularly once it hits, for example, an aqueous solution, and something like ethanol, which I'll draw in its skeletal form like this. In NaOH, the bond between Na and O is essentially ionic, right? O here is negatively charged. The Na plus cation is positively charged. That's an ionic bond. Not the case in ethanol. In ethanol, the carbon-oxygen bond is essentially covalent. It's a polar covalent bond, polarized towards oxygen, but it's still a covalent bond. So when you take this and you dissolve it in water, it's not going to dissociate into O minus and C plus. Mm -mm, not at all. It's going to stay intact. Alcohols are not ionic compounds. They're covalent compounds. So what you want to avoid, and I'm going to draw this once and then immediately erase it, is trying to think about an alcohol as R plus and OH minus. This does not occur under normal circumstances, really under any circumstances that you'll encounter in your introductory or organic chemistry courses. The best way to think about an alcohol is as a covalent compound that stays intact when it goes into solution. Now that said, the hydrogen in the OH group is mildly acidic, and that can be import, an important mode of reactivity for alcohols. Deprotonation, right, proton transfer from the OH group, creating a negatively charged oxygen in the conjugate base. But it's not even that acidic, really. It takes a pretty strong base to remove that proton. And so keeping alcohols intact generally is a good way to go when thinking about this class of compounds under normal circumstances. If we take an alcohol and re we replace the hydrogen in the OH group with some other carbon group, we get to a structure in which we've got two carbon groups connected to a central oxygen. And this is known as an ether. For example, here, essentially what we've done is we've taken ethanol, which was CH3, CH2, OH, and we've replaced the hydroxyl OH with a CH3. This creates an ether. Specifically, this compound is ethyl methyl ether. Ethers are often named by referring to the two carbon groups that are connected to that central oxygen. So we have, for example, a methyl group over here, and we have an ethyl group over here, and we just list these in alphabetical order, which is why ethyl is listed first. Now, you'll sometimes hear the OR fragment, when that R group is relatively small, referred to as an alkoxy group. So for example here, this group boxed in purple is known as a methoxy group, since it has a methyl connected to an oxygen, methoxy. And alkoxy groups like this are commonly found in ethers, right? Essentially have to be found in ethers. Now, an interesting fact about ethers in terms of their physical properties is that they generally boil at lower temperatures than alcohols. And I wanted to touch on this just to dip our toes into the physical properties of organic compounds a little bit. So let's consider again ethanol, 
which has this structure, with the compound we introduced above, ethyl methyl ether, which has this skeletal structure. The thing to notice now about ethanol is that with its hydroxyl group, we're familiar with the idea that this can hydrogen bond. This has the capability of engaging in hydrogen bonding interactions with other ethanol molecules. And so with that relatively strong intermolecular force in ethanol, this is going to be a higher boiling compound than pure ethyl methyl ether, which now actually lacks the ability to hydrogen bond, right? We don't have any more polarized OH or NH or FH bonds in this structure, right? In fact, the only bonds to hydrogen are carbon hydrogen bonds. And so with, with no capacity to hydrogen bond in this ether, we get no strong hydrogen bonding interactions. We get only, quote unquote, dipole-dipole forces holding the molecules of this compound together. And so with those weaker intermolecular forces, we get a relatively low boiling point for the ether relative to the alcohol in which hydrogen bonding can take place.